Hi, Marco Di Stefano here, and welcome to this new episode of the Virtual Orchestration Series. Today I'm showing you the behind the scene of my latest composition, which is called In My Dreams, uh, which is built uh, entirely uh, using uh, Spitfire audio libraries. As usual, you can find the composition on my website, uh, which is www.marcodistefano.art. The composition is the second of a project about scoring two portraits. Uh, in this specific case, these portraits are from a friend of mine, Vincenzo Vitale. I got a feedback from many of you who say that would like to hear the full composition at the beginning of the video. So in this case, here it is. The story I want to tell with this music is one of a man which is thinking about a dream that he realized in his life, starting from the past, where he actually had the inception of uh, this uh, dream, 
uh, going on about with his life uh, with some dramatic moments where he might have work been working on the realization of this dream and then coming back to the present where this dream is now reality so it's clearly an happy hand there is a melodic line that you hear all over the composition which gives uh, represents actually the the dream of this man and you will see that this melodic line is orchestrated in different ways uh, uh, to represent the past, uh, the present and the different uh, emotions. For the beginning of the composition and the introduction of the idea, I wanted to create a real dreamy uh, atmosphere. One of the inspiration for this composition was some music from Vivaldi. And luckily the Spitfire Chamber Evolutions achieved very well to create such kind of textures I wanted to have. So all the MIDI tracks that you see on top, these are all from uh, Spitfire Chamber Evolutions. Uh, they are still in the MIDI because at that time they were not yet in my template, but today they are. So they are all loaded into a contact instance. And since I knew the kind of texture I wanted, I'm really using uh, different articulations from the Spitfire Chamber Evolutions. So you can see they are all over here, like the Chamber 12, uh, Sultasto Pulse, uh, Chamber 15, uh, Sudden Sul Ponte. And to each of these articulations, I am assigning some part of the ar uh, harmonization, of the harmonic movements, sorry. The skeleton of this co composition is actually these uh, harmonic movements. So, so there are very uh, few chords. Uh, which go through all the compositions and now let's look at it ah, here it is so let's give a listen you can see the difference between the different articulations which are building the chord progression and harmonization This one I really like. But it's not only about the choice of the articulations here. There is uh, also uh, huge work, which I did uh, on the automations, to have a nice uh, movement uh, with the uh, uh, modulation and the uh, expression. Not that you need really to do that when using the chamber evolutions because these are really moving textures, but I find it a bit more realistic to have that. Also because there are some articulations which I wanted to hear to be heard uh, more uh, at a certain moment than another. I think the result is beautiful, uh, then up to you to judge. So what you heard so far, this is the, the main uh, uh, chord progression. So there are just a few changes then which happen during the composition. And you can see that then there is a moment in which there is not anymore the strings playing because then it's all played with woodwinds. You will see this later. Now let's listen to the main melodic line. This is uh, initially played with the piano. So we have the triple felt piano from Sweetfire Audio. And a piano, which I always use actually, is the Gerritan CFX Grand Piano. And on top of this, we have also the, some percussion, the Celeste playing. So let's give a listen to what this melodic line is. So mainly you have the piano and the felt piano which are uh, playing in octave and then you have the celesta which is playing uh, harmonically.
One trick I like to use is to have the sustain kept uh, on for all for all a long period. So like for example what I'm doing here. And as a result you have a huge resonance which helps to create the uh, uh, the ambient. So this is uh, almost everything for the first part, except uh, the fact that I'm also using uh, uh, some an, a patch from uh, Hans Zimmer strings. It's probably one of the most used and loved patch so far. It is the 60 violins Collegno Tratto. Here it is. And uh, in my specific case, uh, it is just repeating uh, exactly the same uh, harmonic schema that we have seen uh, with the uh, chamber evolutions. Okay, we don't hear anything at the beginning because I suppose that there is some... Okay, right, uh, some modulation expression. It starts very low, but then here, yeah. So we can see that it's actually not adding anything to the uh, harmony and to the chord progression. It's actually uh, just repeating it. So we have now seen uh, all the instruments which are involved uh, in the first part. So let's give a listen to it. So as I said before, I orchestrated the main uh, team uh, with dif in different ways. First of all, uh, the part that we heard here is uh, inspiring like the past, the very past and the inception of the dream. Now we are going to move into a second phase, which is uh, orchestrated with the uh, strings, which is creating a, a more romantic and uh, melancholic version of the team. Uh, so here I've been using uh, chamber strings, London, London Contemporary Orchestra strings and Hans Zimmer. Let's start with the violins one from chamber strings. And to try to create re some realistic strings, so of course there are some automations for the expression, uh, modulation and uh, uh, vibrato. But also I'm using uh, several uh, articulations from the same patch of uh, Violence 1. So you can see that the phrase is split between different articulations being uh, long, uh, uh, long concertino, long sul, sur, sul ponte, uh, and especially the legato portamento, which uh, creates these uh, very nice uh, 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 slides between one note and the other. And then, as I show, I'm showing in all my videos, so there is a recording uh, that I do with my MIDI controllers. Actually, I'm using Limur to do record that uh, with the uh, expression modulation and uh, uh, vibrato. So here, what I'm showing to you, this curve is the vibrato. So you see, for example, the vibrato increases um, mainly close to long notes, uh, which respects a bit more the reality how these instruments are played. Let's listen now also to the chamber uh, violins too. So you can see that the violins too are harmonically uh, uh, repeating the melodic line. And here again I'm using uh, several uh, articulations from uh, here mainly uh, long and uh, portamento. The third violin's line is done with the London Contemporary Orchestra with, with uh, an articulation which I really love is the open uh, normale uh, so this is uh, repeating, repeating at the octave uh, the violin's one but I think it's nice if we listen to the London Contemporary Orchestra alone which as I said is uh, this open normale articulation so let's give it a listen It's wonderful. Now let's see again what's all together.
and I don't know how much I want to repeat myself, but really the uh, the automation that are absolutely important here to make these strings play as much realistic as possible. So really spend some time on this. Then uh, the next patch we are going to see is the uh, 60 violins legato from the Hans Zimmer, which are actually just playing the melody. Again, this is uh, the automation for the expression, modulation and vibrato. And if you want to see which uh, microphone I used, so here there are two, so the outrigger microphone and the gallery microphone, if I'm not wrong, yes. Close to the 60 violins, there are also uh, 60 cello in legato playing, again, this is it. What the celli are doing here is actually uh, doubling uh, the violins too, but a uh, one octave under. And uh, this is the two together. Another sound that I'm using from the Hans Zimmer strings, uh, it's the 24 bass sul ponte. Uh, which is a very strong one, so you will listen to it. It's adding the main bass to the composition. It's actually playing some kind of pedale roll. Okay, so I think it's in now interesting to listen to all the strings playing together this theme. And then, after this uh, nostalgic moment, uh, we have again the melody uh, given back to the pianos, which actually will introduce uh, the uh, more dramatic moment. The idea of this dramatic moment being the fact that typically we have to fight to uh, reach our dreams, and uh, this is like what is in it. So here it starts with the piano, uh, there is a crescendo and there is also the time which is increasing slowly. And you will listen also that the felt piano is playing always the same four notes, which initially are in consonance with the, with the harmonic progression but later becomes more dissonant. Also you can see here that I'm having some bass, brass added here that are from Albion 5. So this is not a huge bass because I wanted to maintain this dreamy atmosphere and I didn't want to have any leading frequency, especially on the bass. And Albion 5 does this very well. For the final phase, as you can see, all the chamber evolutions will fade out and we'll leave just the texture to the uh, Hans Zimmer, uh, the Collegno Tratto, that will continue to, uh, till the end. And now the theme is orchestrated in a completely different way, uh, based uh, on all woodwinds instruments, so flute, uh, uh, mainly flute, corn anglais, bassoon, horns, uh, some other patches from Bernard Herrmann toolkit. So let's listen to it uh, instrument per instrument, starting with this one, which is uh, the flutes from the Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds. So let's put it in solo. Also in this case, automations, modulation, expression, different articulations, legato, long hollow 
The second instrument in the list is from Bernard Hermann Toolkit. Uh, it's called uh, Concert Flutes. It's actually a mix of uh, flutes. I like it very much, this one, so listen to it. Okay, so maybe let's listen to it alone. Okay, here it is. Start again. As you can hear, this is playing uh, at the octave, the same melody of the flute. This is uh, the articulations I'm using. So long, legato. And in the end, there is a flatter legato. The next one we are seeing here is from the Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds, and is the Cor Anglais. So also this one is playing at the octave, octave still one octave under the others. I know I'm saying already for the 10th time baby, but yes, that's the <laughs> modulation and the expression. Very important to make it sounds realistic. Let's listen now to all of them. So where we will also add the last instrument, which is uh, from the Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds, the bassoon, which is not playing at the octave, but is uh, harmonizing a bit. So here is the lowest line is the bassoon. You see how different the orchestration is now with the woodwinds. It's so much more quiet and that peace. And this is uh, the, the way I wanted to give the impression that finally this dream is now reality. With this uh, very peaceful moment. And then here is what is missing. Uh, so that, uh, let's come back. Okay, saving. All right, uh, this is uh, again the flutter articulation. So I'm using some other patches from Bernard Hermann Toolkit here. Uh, I'm using two of ones, so which is the mixed flutes and the horns, and I'm using the articulations which actually plays uh, chords. So let's look first at the mixed flutes. What does it look like? So, and I'm changing uh, articulation from minor to major articulations. And then I'm also using a second patch from Bernard Hermann Toolkit with the chords. And this is uh, this one, the horns. So it's the same story here, I'm just using uh, the articulation for the minor and major chords. And that's all for the woodwinds part, then maybe what's to add here is that in the end you will uh, hear that there is the chamber evolutions which come back just for a very uh, small time in the end.
So, okay, we were uh, skipping the chamber evolutions. Here they are. This is like bringing back the dream uh, with the initial texture. And uh, that's all for the composition itself. I would like to show you now the tempo track because uh, as I said in all my videos I don't I never use a linear tempo I try to make something which sounds realistic and in this case so you can see that uh, the, there is a huge work done here so there is the moment of the crescendo that you can uh, easily see and uh, where is actually there is the dramatic moment so the time comes, goes from uh, 70 uh, BPM to almost 125 and then goes, uh, goes down again And then for the final part, which is the woodwinds part, you can see that I'm playing it quite uh, with a lower tempo than the beginning, because at the beginning you see we have about 70, and uh, in the end we are in average at, uh, let's say, 50. Because again, I wanted to present the melody with a completely different uh, aspect, more uh, relaxed in peace. The way I've created this tempo here is by tapping the tempo. So meaning that actually I'm recording and tapping notes, uh, having in mind the song and then merging this tapping with the real tempo. And uh, that's a, a fantastic uh, function that actually you should discover if you have never seen that. Uh, you should be able to find this into the, uh, the MIDI uh, menu here. So you go in functions, merge tempo from tapping. There are a lot of tutorials that you can find on the web on how to use this. So I really encourage you from uh, using it. Last thing is uh, the mixer. So this is uh, my template, which uh, I think you might have seen in other, all the other videos. And here, uh, so I'm using uh, uh, in the groups, I'm, I'm having some FX for uh, the reverb. Uh, voila, this is one. So where first of all I'm cutting out uh, some bass and high frequency from uh, the reverb and then I'm using uh, as a reverb the Reverence LA Studio from Cubase Pro version which is actually now the one that I'm always using uh, in this configuration. Also for the old piano I'm having some stereo, de stereo delay and some uh, other uh, reverb because I wanted to have a bit more reverb on these uh, instruments. For the mixing and mastering I'm using Ozone 8 and then for the mixing I have Neutron 2 loaded uh, for certain instruments, for example for the piano here I'm mainly cutting out all the high frequencies as you can see here and then for example another one, uh, let's look at the what is the chamber evolutions okay here it is so this is the EQ which I have here just uh, boosting a bit the bass and the high and reducing a bit the mid frequencies and then for the final mastering I'm using Ozone 8 where I have using just EQ, a bit of compressor and the maximizer so this is my EQ for the compressor I'm using a, a threshold uh, which is at put at minus 14.4 uh, decibel here which is just uh, good enough, so the is uh, never surpassed uh, that much and allows me to even have an increase in the overall gain which is, uh, as you can see, is a 5 decibel of uh, gain increase and uh, finally we have a maximizer which is pushing everything to a um, ceiling of minus 1 decibel so that's all for this video. I hope that you find the composition interesting and that you could uh, see or maybe learn something from uh, this uh, from it. Uh, if you didn't subscribe yet to my channel, so don't uh, hesitate to do that. Uh, you will be notified of all my next uh, compositions and videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.